everybody. Welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. We've got something a little different going on today, so let's get at it. Today I've got my Aunt Rita's Nissan Pathfinder in the shop. It's, a, I think, a 2012. Um, I'll show you what happened to it. The car got creamed in the parking lot at the plaza. Uh, she went in, did her shopping, came out, found the tire flat and all this damage. Um, people, they just drive bad nowadays, even in a parking lot. Your car is not safe anywhere anymore. So anyway, they got the spare tire put on it and got it home. But the tire uh, was rubbing against the, the plastic here. So I went up there to her place and found um, there's an oil cooler in here that was bent back on its bracket that was pushing all this plastic against the tire. So what we're going to do now is um, I'm going to get it up in the air, get the front wheels off it, see if I can maybe just pull this whole front bumper off. I'm not sure how it's attached to the bottom of the fender. We'll, uh, we'll see what we got to do and see if we can get this thing fixed up for her. It's not... We're not doing like a, a, a you know, a, a paint a paint job here. It, it's just going to get patched up so it's drivable um, and she can carry on. You can see here, new rim, new snow tire, and have a listen. That's right through the sidewall. Unfortunately, this tire is junk. So uh, she'll need to go back where she got these and get one tire and one rim. Um, man, man, people are, um, language warning here. People are assholes. I don't know what they're doing driving through the friggin' parking lot at Walmart like that, but here we have the result. Oh, well, what are you going to do? And while it's in here, I'll just kind of go over it a little bit and check it out and see if I can, uh, see if I can fix up any silly little things that I see wrong with it. Somebody else creamed it on this side. Poor car, it's had a, it's had a rough go. <laughs> Doesn't matter where you park it, somebody hits it. Anyway, um, it is what it is. While it's in here, I got it up in the air. I got the wheels off. Anyway, um, seeing as how her left front wheel is junk, we're going to go ahead. I grabbed the summer tires out of her garage while I was up there. So we'll put the summer tires back on it. And I'm going to have just a fast kind of look at it, make sure everything seems okay before I give it back to her. I could see here it's had a break job at some point. I'll just double check that, make sure everything's turning nicely. Um, and I'll find out about the back brakes when I get the back wheels off. I'll also check the, just have a fast look at the front end and stuff while I'm in there. But anyway, number one job, we gotta figure out what to do with this bumper. Every bumper on every car is held on in its own mysterious way so about all we can do is just start taking taking bolts out and taking little push fasteners and stuff out until it, it comes off. <laughs> That's all we could do. You can see in here, I mean, it, it's pulled all the, all the Christmas tree fasteners out of that. Man, they must have hit this thing hard. Wow. So you can see in here, this I'm assuming is a transmission cooler. It's, it's pushed back, the end of it's all hammered in, but it, it doesn't seem to be leaking. So um, that's good. I gotta try though and pull it back a, li a little bit more um, to see if I can get the um, this plastic piece. See, it, it's, it's still pushing this plastic piece back toward the wheel. So we have to get in there and see what we can do about that. I don't think there's too much more holding this thing. I might pull this whole, this whole inner down. Well, we'll see. Well, that sure was fun, but we got the grill and the bumper cover off. Thank goodness I found uh, a video on YouTube of where all the hidden little clips and stuff were on this grill. Un unbelievable. It's a snap together car. Well, they're all they're all like that now. This one's no different than any of the others. It's just learning where the funny little clips are. Anyway, so we got that dealt with. Now we can have a look here, and you can see the damage to the uh, transmission cooler here. 
I'm almost convinced or, or certain that's that's what this is. It's the transmission cooler. So we're gonna have to see if we could get this thing. It, you can see here it's it's pulled right out of the bracket. So we'll have to see if we can if we can get that fixed up. And uh, I'm not sure how mangled this top bracket has gotten, but I know this this thing has got to be pulled back um, a little bit anyway. So we'll uh, get it free from it free from its brackets and see what we can do. I'm gonna let all these fasteners soak with some PB Blaster. And while that's going on, we're gonna see if we could straighten out the, um, the mounting brackets on this cooler. You can see that one's mangled. I think that one is kind of mostly how it needs to be. Hard to say. It's bent that way a little bit. So we'll get some pliers and stuff and we'll try to get these things straightened up. Took a little heat to get these little guys out, but uh, we got them. That's the main thing. So we'll let everything cool off, and then I think we could probably try and put this thing back together. Okay, there's that fixed up. Wow, what a hit it took. Holy Toledo. Now we start stitching the broken plastic together with some zip ties. It's about all you can do. It's uh, how we used to patch up the race cars and it worked just fine. This is kind of reminiscent of my old race car collision repairs because uh, both my race cars had oil coolers in the, in the front corners of them and we'd always be, yeah, it just kind of, just kind of reminds me of that. Good times. Anyway, yada, yada, yada. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to leave this kind of loose and flopping around now and we're going to go ahead and see if we can get the bumper stitched back up and get it put back on and then we'll do our um, our final kind of um, assembly of everything once we've got the bumper ready to go on. For this I'm just going to get a hunk of aluminum and make a little fish plate to go in behind it and we'll put some rivets through it. That'll hold that together. There we go. That's the bumper cover all stitched back together with some uh, old school stock car technology. Now I got to get the, the foam back on the rebar, but you'll see on this end, uh, the mounting dowel you see there, it's sheared off on this end. So I might have to put a piece of string around it or something just to get it to stay there while we hang the bumper cover on. No worries. Wouldn't you know, the little mounting peg for the bumper foam was still stuck in the bumper. So we just super glued it back on. Perfect. Let that sit for a minute and then we can uh, put this thing back together. I stuck a three inch deck screw down through it just to make sure it stays there. Now I can put the bumper on. It just kind of goes straight in and it clips. It clips into here and then there's little... Um, there's little trim clips that hold it on onto that bit of structure there. Not bad. That's pretty darn good. There we go. Everything's buttoned up in here. So now we're going to put the grill back in and this, this cover plate that goes on the top. And that'll be that part all done. While we're under here, we'll try to fix up a few little things that I saw. I noticed here, see this was wet and it was coolant and the coolant reservoir is empty. So I found here that this joint, I think it's for an oil cooler or a transmission cooler or something. Uh, I guess an oil cooler, the transmission cooler is at the other end. It was leaking. It's got one of these spring clamps on it. So I just slid that back a little bit. It's still clamping on the, on the very end of the pipe, and then I put a gear clamp in front of it. Hopefully that'll stop that. Uh, when I get up top, I have to find out what the heck this thing takes for coolant and see if I've got any of it. Um, other stuff I see under here, this uh, flex joint in the exhaust is getting uh, really bad. There's not a lot left of it. It's not long for this world. And then I noticed the usual heat shield business. So I got to get back there next and see if I can uh, put some great big, you know, do the great big washer trick and get that stuck back up. This heat shield here is, is a little, 
sketchy. Not really a lot I can do with that. I could maybe put some mechanics wire or a, or a gear clamp around it. Probably mechanics wire would be the best bet for that. I'll go ahead and do that. And then we'll slide back to the other heat shield. And there's our heat shield fix. I just lowered it down, put some great big washers on the on the bolts. Now it's back up there solid. I guess next time we'll need washers this big. Uh, it's an it's an endless battle here in the salt belt. Look, there's already been some exhaust work done on it. Oh, we just fight a losing we fight a losing battle against winter. Let me tell you. Now I got all that done. I think I could go ahead and start trying to get all these. All these plastic bits back kind of attached to the car. Uh, we're gonna need some uh, some little speed nuts. I think I've got them in my in my jar there. They all fell on the floor when I took it apart. And then we'll just slowly, slowly start getting it back together. Stuff like this, this thing's hanging off. We'll get it all back together. I topped up the coolant. Look here what it says on the old press stone. All vehicles, makes, models, and years. So it says it mixes with anything, so we'll take their word for it. Filled it up to the line on the jug, um, so that's good to go. Well, the wheels are all torqued up. Now i got to go ahead, and uh, they're supposed to have 33 PSI in them. And then I'm going to show you something interesting when I'm done that. Something I want to show you now, and it, I didn't really notice it when the mini spare was on, but now I've got the full size tire back on it. This whole wheel looks to me like it's shoved back in the in the wheel well. I looked underneath, I don't see anything really like obviously bent, but I mean, it's probably only moved back about that far. And it just takes something to tweak a little bit, right? Like the control arm, the lower control arm, it's a big, heavy aluminum casting and it comes out but right the last maybe two inches to the ball joint it necks right down and it may be tweaked there or the strut may have a little wow in it I'm not sure that's not something I tried to put my my camber gauge on it to check it and the wheel is just too big my camber gauge won't even fit on this car there's nothing really I can do about it except um, advise her to take it in somewhere and uh, have the alignment looked at and if it gets a clean bill of health from them, it does. It's just maybe a, a bit of an illusion or, or whatever. Or if it's out of spec, because I don't think there's anything really adjustable on this. So if they check the alignment and it's not within spec, something's bent. But luckily, I mean, the subframe in this, there's no way you can bend that. I, I mean, it, it ain't the subframe that's bent. So it's either the strut or the control arm. And I would just change both and, and be done with it. And I think then it'll it'll be a okay, but that that'll be up to her. I got to uh, call her up now and let her know what I found. And uh, after I'm going to take it for a test drive and uh, make sure everything's okay. I took it out for a spin, and it, it seems to drive okay, but it, there's still a little a little funny. Every now and then you hit something just right in the road, and it, and it feels a little spooky, just just kind of for a split second. So. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure there's something bent over there. Now you can see here, like you see here, this is the right front wheel that hasn't been whacked. And you can see it fits perfectly front to rear in the center of the wheel well. And this one on this side, you can clearly see that it's pushed to the back. Now, like I said, whether it's the control arm or the strut that's bent, I'm betting on the control arm. Um, who knows? It, it'll have to go in somewhere where they can get it up in the air, get it underneath it. Get the alignment heads on it and kind of kind of see what's where you know but for now at least it's it's roadworthy i mean she can take it around to to the garage or whatever and uh, and get it dealt with further i've done my part of it now it's time for the 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 next step right so that'll wrap that one up if there's any uh exciting news about it coming down the pipe later i'll let you know about it but uh for now, our our, uh, our part of the job is done. Anyway, I'd like to thank you for tuning in. I hope you'll come back and see us again. And until then, I'm Kevin saying so long from the Claremont Classic Garage.